This week was week 12 of my final major project in which I mainly continued production and some post-production of my short film. This included editing the footage that I'd recorded last week, focusing on the various special effects used in the film. One of these included using the software Audition, which was completely new to me. Since I was inexperienced in this program, I watched a YouTube tutorial to help me learn new audio editing techniques. I'm glad I had the opportunity to experience this, as I want to be as skilled as I can in many different pieces of software, so I have a variety of abilities to prepare me for the film industry. A big part of my work this week was filming the beach scene of my short film. This was the final scene I needed, and with it, finished means the end of the production phase. The collection of shots I recorded for this scene are by far my favourite pieces of cinematography I have ever done, as I feel like they are extremely pretty and scenic, better than my average film work. I think that this is particularly apparent compared to the other inside scenes of my film. However, with the rest of the film being in a plain room, and only one room, means that I am very restricted in terms of creative shots, so I do not think the fact that they are not that exciting can be helped. This is why I put extra effort into making the beach scene as stunning as possible to act as the kind of showcase of what cinematography I could pull off. If I were to do this project again, I would pick a short film that had more kind of different locations in it so I could showcase different types of cinematography, as in this, all I got to do was the beach scene. A problem that arose during the film was my actress, who was on her way to the set, hit a pothole and her car tie went out. This unforeseen circumstance meant that filming was delayed by about three hours that day, and since we were both supposed to be cast members on someone else's set soon after, this was a big problem. However, we decided that we would just have to film the scenes after this, which we did. This actually worked out better than the previous plan, as now the time was sunset, it meant that the shots looked way more scenic and cinematic. Overall, I am glad that this happened and that I was able to work around the problem and feel that it possibly impacted the camera work of my short film. Another problem that occurred this week was when I finished my shot log. I'd started the shot log a few weeks ago, but admittedly, admittedly forgotten about it when the production phase started. To help me organise the log, I ordered the footage files on my computer by number. This meant that Premiere Pro was unable to find the clips as they were initially enabled under another name, so I had to individually locate each clip. The situation got worse when I paired the clips with the wrong video files, meaning that the timeline in Premiere had all of the wrong footage in the wrong order. By this point the project was nearly beyond saving, but thankfully the night before I'd exported the project so it was saved onto my computer unharmed. Thankfully I had completed all of the visual effects, so I was still able to add audio and work continued without a problem. I think a massive lesson I've learned from this is to only change the names of imported files before or after I'm working on video, but never whilst in that process. I decided to undertake the post-production aspects of my project at the same time as the production because I feel like if I had the required footage, which I do, it would be efficient to start editing as soon as possible, and because I want to ensure that I'm not behind on any of my work. This is still following my Gantt chart, which I made previously, so I'm confident that according to my schedule, my final project will be handed in on time. Thanks for watching, like and sub.